Hello, my name's Tom and welcome back to my channel where I talk a little bit about theatre, a little bit about being a PhD student and a little bit about those two things tied up in a bow together. Uh, today, my first video that I'm recording in 2018 uh, and it's going to be another episode of Essay Tips. If you're new here, then please do consider subscribing and as always, if there's any particular elements of kind of study skills or essay writing that you'd like me to make a video on, then please do drop a comment down below. But today, we are going to be looking at expanding our bibliographies and finding more references for our essays. So one of my more popular videos is one in which I looked at some tips and tricks for using Google Scholar to find um, references in terms of journal articles and books that might be useful in writing essays. However, as I've begun to do a little bit more teaching of undergraduates over the last couple of terms, I've realised that some of those skills can actually be quite advanced. And so I wanted to do a slightly more entry level video uh, about finding references and how we might use them within our academic writing. Particularly at undergraduate level and particularly that first year of undergrad, I think this new need to reference um, everything that we're writing about can be a real challenge um, in that step up from school to university or college. And so I wanted to do a little bit of a video which I talked about why we do this, um, as well as some strategies to make those reference lists, uh, those bibliographies at the end of our essays, um, feel a little bit more substantial. While some people cope with this step up really, really well, um, I also find that some people uh, struggle to find the reasoning behind it and as such either hand in essays with very few references at all or try and stack full of bibliography of books which maybe haven't been consulted as much as they suggest they have. So today I want to do a slightly more entry level video in which I look at how we use referencing in writing our essays and also underlying all of that a little bit of why. One question I get asked an awful lot is how many references should be included for essays of varying lengths. And unfortunately, as with many things in the world of academia and university, there's no simple answer to this. Sometimes, particularly within early undergraduate essays, there's a stipulated number of uh, references that are stated on an assessment uh, brief that it says that you should draw from or include in your bibliography. And I think this is useful in underlining how important referencing is at undergraduate level. However, I think sometimes it can make it seem a little bit like a box ticking exercise rather than something that has real academic value to it. The first take home piece of advice from this video then is to always assume that if there is that stipulated number of references to include in an assessment or assignment brief, then to always take that as very, very light guidance. Essentially, in most cases, I'd say that should be the absolute bare minimum number of references that you're including in your essay. I'd really suggest that in most cases, you want to be including an even longer bibliography than that is suggested to show that whoever's marking that essay, that you've really gone above and beyond in seeking out sources uh, and resources that you might draw upon to inform the writing of that essay, and that you've got a real mastery of the subject that you're writing about. The function of referencing is essentially to back up any claims that we're making within an essay that we might be writing. So, for example, I might want to start an essay about Star Wars by stating that Star Wars is an incredibly popular film franchise. Now, if I was talking to some of my friends, then I might be able to say this and it might go uncontested. But lots of people don't particularly like Star Wars that much. And if I was to hand in an essay to someone who didn't like Star Wars that much and say it was incredibly popular, then they might rightly be able to use themselves as an example of how it is not universally popular. So instead, what I want to do is use some evidence to back up exactly how I'm measuring popularity, but also be able to point to some study or some stats which show that it is in that way popular. So, for example, I might draw upon this Forbes article that I did a quick Google and found, which says that Star Wars is the third most financially successful film franchise of all time, and include a reference to that within my essay. Therefore, rather than kind of stating that it is in some way popular, I'm specifically stating that Star Wars has been financially successful. 
and I'm giving some evidence to back up that claim. Where previously then, I was just stating that Star Wars was broadly popular in some undefined sense of popularity, and therefore leaving myself open to someone contesting that or disagreeing with me. In fact, now what I'm doing is very specifically stating how I'm measuring popularity, but more importantly, I'm referencing where I've got those numbers from so that I can prove that it has that financial significance. This brings me to another misconception which I often come across, and that is that there is in some way a difference between referencing and citing and quoting within an article and the bibliography which sits at the end. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'd like to suggest that in most cases, these are two parts of the same whole. They're essentially one and the same, that they should work together throughout your essay. In my essay in Star Wars, then, I'll both include a citation to that Forbes article in the sentence where I talk about the financial success of Star Wars, either by directly quoting a passage from that article or by just including um, the reference uh, style in my chosen style at the end of the sentence where I mention uh, that statistic. But I'll also include it in my bibliography at the end. I'd suggest it a little bit unwise to include too many books or articles or essays in your bibliography at the end of your essay, which you don't directly either quote from or draw facts from and then cite during the main body of your essay. I quite often find that uh, bits of work get handed in where there is lots of works which have supposedly been referred to by the person that has written a particular essay, uh, but not directly drawn or quoted upon from. And now whether this is the intention or not, or the case or not, what often happens is this comes across as though the student's trying to kind of bulk out their bibliography without actually having to do any in-depth reading of those pieces of work. So I'd always suggest trying to use the books that are in your bibliography and to quote from or draw facts from them throughout the main body of your essay. And also to include the opposite way round to make sure you've included all of the um, citations and quotes that you've made throughout your essay in that bibliography at the end. If you find yourself at the end of your essay writing process and considering yourself to have quite a short bibliography, I'd suggest that what will probably happen is if you look back through your essay and if you're very sure that you've got a strong argument, which I think is a topic for another video at another time, but if you look back through your essay, you'll find claims that you've made where actually it might help you to find some more evidence to support that claim. A good task then is to go away and look for some sources which can back up some of those claims that you've made within your essay. In doing so, you'll both improve the strength with which those claims come across by providing evidence and, by extension, increase and uh, draw out that bibliography that you've got at the end. The opposite task can also be very, very useful. If you're certain that a particular article or a particular book belongs in the bibliography of your essay, but you've yet to directly quote or draw facts from it throughout the main body of the essay, then perhaps it's worth going away and having another look through that particular article or book and seeing what facts or opinions or quotes you might be able to draw from it throughout the, the central argument of your essay. Essentially, it's always worth considering the bibliography and those citations and quotations that you use throughout the main body of your essay as two parts of the same whole, always working together to support each other, to back up the arguments that you're making and therefore make your essay even stronger. I thought I'd end by just restating even further why we bother including a bibliography and references throughout our work and to kind of implore you to uh, view it as something more than just another hurdle to jump over uh, while at uni. And I'm going to do so through a slightly bad metaphor. So if we consider all of knowledge to be a tree, I, I told you this was going to be bad, then your essay is a little sprout growing off of a branch, growing off of another branch, growing off of another branch, growing off of the trunk, which then leads down into those roots. Without all of those connections then the water and nutrients from those roots would never be able to get to that little sprout and therefore it would wither off and die. In the same way your essay is a new argument and for us to take it seriously and for it to come across really strongly we need to see how that new argument is supported by existing evidence or existing arguments that we know to be true which in this slightly stretched now metaphor are the kind of slightly stronger branches and then essentially the trunk. But in the same way, our references show where we've drawn facts and knowledge and arguments from to show those links back to the roots and to allow our arguments and essays to grow big and strong. Yes.
Oh, that was all right, actually, I, I think. I think that made sense. Thank you very much for watching this essay tips video. Uh, if you have enjoyed, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, any further questions, then please do put them in the comments down below. I do tend to hang around in the comment sections of some of my videos when they pop up. Um, and also, if you've got any uh, tips that you'd like to pass on to some other fellow travellers stumbling across this video, uh, then do leave those below too. I'm sure that future watchers of this video uh, may thank you for that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching once more and have a great week.